why you must have health insurance. Hey everyone, Todd here, internalarchitect.com. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about why you must have health insurance. Now before I begin, please hit subscribe below and hit the bell for notifications. And please leave a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, this is a pretty important one, but I want you to stay tuned through the whole thing because I'm gonna reveal what my cost is for my Hodgkin's lymphoma up until this past Wednesday, which was August 5th. And <clears throat> you guys will be blown away by its number. So why you must have health insurance? There's a lot of reasons it's really, really difficult, and this is a big issue when it comes to pol uh, politics and everything else that's going along, especially since we are less than 90 days to presidential election day. This is something that I keep a close eye on when it comes to everyone and everything and the politics side of it, especially because it is a very hotly contested issue, and especially since I am someone with a pre-existing condition. It is very much known that one of the biggest causes of stress and anxiety for a cancer patient is the financial burden that it causes. And it can be incredibly big in so many different ways. Cancer is such a burden in, in not just what it can do to the family unit, but also what it does to the entire medical system you know it's it's a big waterfall effect that happens not only with insurance companies but also in how it's billed and and everything else and there's a lot that goes on in between that we don't even know right there's there's all the hard costs that we that you can find and find pretty easy but there's also a lot of shadow costs that happen that you just don't know about because of this, it causes just a lot of frustration. And I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. I just wanted to, I needed to give it enough time in order to make sure that I had some good information to be able to produce it. So if you don't have health insurance, this is what everything could potentially look like. And this is why medical bankruptcy is such a big thing when it comes to people that don't have health insurance but there's also a bigger situation at hand also and that's for people that don't have health insurance and whether they are on their state medicaid or or say they have somehow figured out how to get on a medicare ssdi medicare it still costs x amount because there's just it's just freaking expensive. That's the best way to put it. A lot of that just has to do with how time and how billing and how everything has shown itself over the course of decades. And so that's why I really wanted to touch on this. So if you don't have health insurance and you're going through cancer, it, it can be, I can understand why some people just don't want to go and they just want to give up. This is one of the reasons why it's really hard for survivors and patients to even be able to deal with the big broad spectrum that happens as you are going through cancer because financially it's damn near impossible to do without insurance. And that's the other thing too is it locks you into the current western medicine system and there's no room to try exterior types of treatments also because a huge majority of oncologists and primary care doctors don't really believe in outside influences that have potentially been around for thousands of years. A lot of uh, Chinese culture and Chinese medicine and stuff like that and uh, Asian medicines, different types of, of ways to be able to possibly treat cancers that would cost very, very little. Then you throw in like all the pharmaceutical sides of things and it just, it's just yeah, there's, there's a lot of corruption, a lot of hard reality that goes on for us as, as the patient, as the consumer. So the cost breakdown to this point is, for me, in my case, is staggering. I did a 
I pulled it from my insurance website and fortunately I have insurance and good insurance to be able to help take care of this. And this is where it's at. Yeah, I can't even believe I'm gonna tell you this number, but I have, I think there's 80, I forget, 84, 85 line items into it totaling $566,884.87. Yeah, and that was uh, since I was diagnosed last year. So that has to do with uh, the chemotherapies that I have done that I was allergic to, all the surgeries that I have done, you know, the port placement, uh, the, the lymph node biopsies, the 23 rounds of radiation I went through, the four rounds of immunotherapy that I've been through. So there's uh, all the blood tests, all the PET scans, all the x-rays, the emergency room visits, you name it. So it's a little bit of everything that has gone on with this. Yeah, $566,884.87, and that's just a little bit over a year. So when this whole thing is done, it's probably going to be close to a million dollars in insurance claim for my Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's why it's, uh, it's really hard to to really fathom this because if I didn't have insurance, I one, I don't think I'd be getting the care that I, I needed to be able to deal with this. And two, it would be, I, I would probably be in a lot deeper spot. I don't know if I'd be able to afford going to the doctor and doing, actually, I know I wouldn't be. I mean, who can take on 566,000, $567,000 worth of of bills. I mean, that's a really, really nice house in 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 a huge majority of the country. That's like a, a a really nice condo up here in Breckenridge. You know, that's it's that's where it's really kind of a frustrating thing for me because just that that pure amount of money that's been spent. So my final thoughts on this is I have had insurance since I was 18 years old. I made sure that that was the number one thing that I cared for that I made sure that I had just to one because of all the snowboarding stuff I was doing and two just to make sure that I was covered in all the different aspects of health insurance while I was going through snowboarding it was really imperative that I wasn't going to get stuck with a crazy bill if I broke my leg or I had to have knee surgery or or something even more catastrophic right so I have always had full coverage insurance, health insurance. Even through my last round of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma 10 years ago, I had full coverage, thankfully, and it was decent insurance at the time too. It's tough, and, and what's really tough about it is, is it's expensive. It is, you, you almost need to readjust and reprioritize what is important because the insurance that you are paying for your health is it really is a lot more important and will save your butt in the long run compared to having a car or you know if you have to rent a house that's fine also but you know <clears throat> your health insurance is is super super critical in order to be able to work through the system that is currently with us today also you know, I, I briefly touched on a little bit of politics in here. You know, I'm just keeping an eye on who is going to make sure that pre-existing conditions are part of the way moving forward within our health system. I think there's a lot of reform that needs to happen within the medical industry. And in order to do it and to do it right, it needs things need to be done. That's my final thoughts. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please hit me in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Yeah, I'm sure that there's uh, a lot to be discussed here and I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about it. I appreciate your time and energy into watching the videos and I will see you on the next video.